To work with MATLAB, you first have to create an account at MATWORKS. The link will be provided in the description. After creating your account, you can log in and obtain a license suited for your requirements. There are different licenses available, including a student license, a 30-day free trial, and a range of additional packages. After this, you can download the installer, install MATLAB, activate your version, and get working. Before we have a look at the environment, let's first have a look at exactly what MATLAB is. As you would probably have guessed, it is a higher programming language. MATLAB allows you to create sophisticated programs while learning the language relatively easily. MATLAB also comes with its own Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. This allows you to write your code in an environment that is more than just a simple text editor. You get additional features, such as syntax highlighting, specific error messages and debugger tools, autocorrection, extensive documentation and lots of examples. MATLAB also comes with a lot of inbuilt functions that cover more than just simple operations. Some of them are more straightforward, such as the isPrime function, which checks an array for prime numbers. Others are more complex, such as differential equation solvers. Additionally, MATLAB is constantly being updated. New toolboxes are created and can be obtained easily. Examples of these are the Robotics System Toolbox or the Bioinformatics Toolbox. These toolboxes aid you in tackling complex problems in a specific area, without you having to write all the code yourself. Now we know what MATLAB is, what is it used for? Of course, it is used for mathematics, to be more precise, computational mathematics. It covers areas such as matrix and array handling, data analysis, statistics, calculus, linear algebra, data visualization, integration, and lots of others. MATLAB does have particular strengths in some fields. It is especially strong in linear algebra and array manipulation, but MATLAB's constant development and expansion means it is continuously improving its performance in other fields. Lastly, who uses MATLAB? Lots of people use MATLAB. Among these are scientists, engineers, people in finance, mathematicians, and of course, iGEM competitors. Before jumping into MATLAB, we'll first have a look at its environment setup. This consists of a tool strip, providing you with your basic quick access tools, a current folder panel, showing your working directory and its contents, the command window, which is used as an interactive shell to type in your statements or execute your functions and scripts from, a workspace, listing your used variables, and a command history panel, which explains itself. Here you can see that the layout of MATLAB looks the same as what we saw earlier on the slides. Depending on your version and on your needs, the layout can differ. As you can see here, we can resize the windows as we want, and we can remove some by clicking the arrow in the top left of the panel. Later, if we feel the need, we can add them back on by going to Home, Layout, and the appropriate panel. The tool strip up here contains three global tabs, Home, Plots, and Apps, which are always present as well as some contextual tabs which only appear under certain circumstances. The Home tab contains some basic quick access tools, such as create a new variable. The Layout button is quite important. In case you ever mess with your layout, you can reset it to its default. The Plot tab has a variety of different plot options allowing you to nicely represent your data. And the Apps tab lists your currently installed or available toolboxes. For example here, I have Symbiology among some others. Here you can also obtain new toolboxes from the MATLAB file exchange. Pressing the ALT key allows you to view the shortcuts, as you can see here. So ALT A brings me to apps, and ALT H brings me back to home. The command window down here allows you to execute your commands. I want to create three variables for now. X will be a simple scalar. Y will be a row vector created by using square brackets and then simply typing in the values. And Z will be a matrix created using square brackets. A semicolon is used to indicate the beginning of a new row. Notice how MATLAB always displays the name and value. To suppress output, simply add A semicolon after your statement. Also notice how the variables appear in the workspace up on the right. 
Click on them to see the contextual tabs appear in the tool strip. You can also directly modify your variables in the workspace by using the spreadsheet, for example, to change value or to change size. If you close MATLAB now, the workspace will be deleted. So if you want to use these numbers in the next session, simply type save and the name you want to save it under. Now I can clear the variables using the clear with a variable name or simply delete all of them using clear only. Loading these back is possible using the load command. In the bottom right, we have the command history and by clicking on a command, I can re-execute it. This is also possible to do by using the arrow up key, which I find more useful. So I usually remove the command history panel This allows you to maintain a larger workspace panel. Our last panel on the left shows your current working directory and its files. It can easily be navigated using the level up button or the familiar folder navigation system. I'm currently in the first tutorial one folder. Here I want to create our first script. This is done by using the edit command followed by the script name you want to create or edit. A script allows you to write and save a series of commands without having to retype them in the command line once you want to use them again. In here, we want a simple message displayed using the display brackets command. In it, we have a string indicated by the quotation marks. To execute the script, simply type its name into the prompt and it displays our message. However, if I go one folder up and re-execute, MATLAB throws an error, undefined function or variable. This is because the folder I'm currently working in does not have a script. Remember, it is one folder below. MATLAB only executes scripts or functions that are in the current working directory, so this one, or in its search path. Since we have not added the tutorial one folder to the MATLAB search path, it is not looking there for the script, cannot find it, and throws an error. To add it, click on Home, Set Path, and add your desired folder. Now we can try and re-execute it and it'll work. One last thing which I want to show you is how to create a script. You will probably be using this all throughout your MATLAB career. So we open up a new script and we'll call it Startup. This will be a script that is executed at the start of MATLAB and sets some of my basic settings. In it, I want to display a welcoming message, set my folder to be this one and set the format to compact. Notice how MATLAB always adds additional lines for better readability. This is nice, but it clutters up the screen too quickly, so I remove these by setting the format to compact. As well, if you're ever unsure what a command does, simply type in doc and the command name, and MATLAB will give you extensive documentation, as well as a range of examples for it. Now let's quit MATLAB using quit command and then restart it. See you in a second. Now that MATLAB has restarted, we can see that the welcoming message is successfully displayed. The working directory is automatically set to the folder I want to be in. And the format is set to compact. To make MATLAB execute the script automatically in the beginning, it has to be called startup and be in a folder that is in MATLAB's search path. Thank you for watching. In the next video in the iGEM MATLAB series, we will be discussing variables.